Hello SC Nation, welcome to the first video on the We The SEs YouTube channel and welcome to my office. As you know, many SEs spend a lot of time in their cars so I figured why not do a video in my car and it's winter so I'm wearing a big jacket. What is the best way to do a demo? I sit down with Peter Cohan, the author of a great demo and I go through the process of demoing something for him and having him critique me. He provides a lot of... Uh, insight and value at least to me throughout so check it out and i'll see you on the other side 90 percent 95 percent maybe 99 percent of people when you ask can you see my screen if you're seeing if you're sharing anything they're going to say yes uh okay. but what you don't know and particularly independent with what tool you're using is have they met are they seeing the um let me rephrase. Are they using their full screen to see what you are? And in many cases, you may need to gently remind people to go into full screen mode. Would you like, would you like an, an additional tip? Yes, please, anytime. So take your mouse, and this is actually probably a good time to do this. Take your mouse, move it to the top left-hand corner of your workspace there or your screen, and ask me if I see your mouse moving. All right. Do you see your, my mouse moving? I do, at the top left corner. Now do the same thing in the bottom right corner. Can you and see it? I, oh, there it is. Now I see it. Yes. And about, what you, what you, what you, sorry? I'm just going to ask, how about, do you see me writing? Oh, I can't, you can't see me writing right now. I guess it's not working here. Let me see. <laughs> where, where did it go? So there you go. Do you see there you writing? go. I do. Perfect. By the way, what you've, what you've done with, that little mouse in the upper left, mouse in the bottom right, is, is confirmed a couple of things and uh, trained your audience in a small way. You've confirmed that not only can they see your screen, but they're seeing the same screen real estate that you are, so that uh, you, they're not clipping anything. And you've also begun to drive interactivity. Okay, that's, that's good. There you go. All right, okay. keep going. I'm learning a lot. So. Uh, I don't have any employees in my company uh, for obvious, for, I mean, at least for the podcast. So I recruited my wife and my brother for this demo. They don't actually have to physically be here, but at least I'm going to use their names. Got it. So generally speaking, when I'm trying to set up a meeting with my, with anybody really, uh, that is refusing to cooperate. Let's see. So I bought this tablet, which is supposed to let me write on the, on my screen without the use of the mouse, but for obvious reasons in the middle of a demo, it just refuses to work. <laughs> okay. So learn it here. Yeah. All right. Let me use my mouse then. So this is me, Ramsey. I'm just going to say Ram because uh, my, my tablet is not working. My wife, her name is Roxanne. I'm just going to put Rox mm -hmm. again. And then you have my brother, which G is going to be good enough. Okay. So, so when I send an email out, I look at my calendar. That takes about a couple of minutes. And then I send an invite to, or at least I send an email to both Roxanne and Rasan, G, and give them a couple of options. So you have option one and option two. And in most cases, at least for the scenario that I'm doing, Roxanne answers and gives me options three and four. So I have to go look at my calendar, which are different than options one and two. So I have to go look at my calendar, stop what I'm doing if I'm not being efficient, and then go back and say if it's good or not. If it is good, then I have to send the son, my brother, the update saying, hey, how about options three and four? And because mm -hmm. my brother always likes to make my life hard, he sends me back with option five. So again, I take a look at my calendar, send Roxanne option five, because she's my wife and she loves me. She says, yes, let's just get it done. <laughs> so she says yes, and that's when I send the invite to both my brother and my wife, and we finally meet. Right. right. Good. All right. So if we're using 
the automated system that uh, that we have, the ver- the artificial AI. What I do is I add Amy here, who is my assistant. If you prefer Andrew, there's also Andrew as an assistant. So so Amy will be between myself and Roxanne and the son. And what happens here is that I send one email out saying, hey, let's meet. Amy, can you schedule something at, in the afternoon at some point? And then Amy sends Ghassan and Roxanne options one and two. And then Roxanne sends Amy options three and four. Amy sends Ghassan option three and four. And I'm running out of real estate. So that's nice. That's right. I, yeah. I get where it's going. Keep going though. You can draw elsewhere and I'll get it. Yeah. And so Hassan sends option five to Amy. Amy confirms option five with Roxanne. Roxanne says yes. Amy sends the invite to everybody else. So, and that including myself. So instead of having how many touch points here? One, two, three, four, five six, seven touch points where I'm personally involved. I have two touch points where I send the first mm-hmm. email and then Amy sends me back with my, uh, with the meeting invite. That being said, I, this is a more of a convoluted example. I am aware, but not all examples are just easy as I send an email and people say, yes, it happens. Sometimes it's more complicated. Sometimes it's less. So what in, and if you take a look at my email, I sent one email saying, hey, guys, I want to do a demo. My AI assistant is going to send a meeting. And although there are a few emails in here, most of them are just saying uh, updates. Hey, uh, this is because it's brand new. I'm actually send, I was sending you a uh, hello. This is my meeting invite. Some of them are just Roxanne accepted. Gaston's not answering because he's my, your brother and doesn't like you. And in the end, she sends out the invite. And that's pretty much the entire demo from, from what I've seen, from like what it actually takes to set up a meeting invite. And this is the website for x.ai. So any questions? Uh, let's see, any questions? Let's see. Um... So the way this works, sure, sure, I'll ask some questions. So sure. can you limit the um, the availability times? Yes. How do you well, how do you how do you limit the availability times? Well, it takes a look at your calendar. One, it takes a look at your calendar. So it's integrated with your calendar to see uh, what time are available. You can also program uh, preferred times. So it will always try to set up meetings within your preferred times and it takes travel time into account. So if you're driving some places and in my email that I sent, I specified, um, please schedule something next week in the afternoon. So it will take a look at my calendar and look for after any afternoon that I'm available and provide those options. Got it. Okay. Um, and, um, so what I have to do, if I want to block time where I don't want to be available, I, I physically block it on my calendar. And then Amy, Amy sees that effectively and, and respects it, correct? Yes. So weekends, and, and I've certainly I could designate weekends are off limits and time before, you know, let's say 7.30 a.m. Uh, and after 5.30 p.m. are also off limits. I assume I can do those kinds of boundaries. Yes. You can put like working hours is the only time I'm available. Uh, please just send me any like send me meetings from within that time. Okay. And, and you can override that if you ever choose to. And what happens if somebody says, oops, I, I, um, I got to change. All right. So this is a, this is the meeting summary for the meeting that I just talked about. You also have cancel meeting button and reschedule button. Ah, okay. Right. So you can always reschedule, you can cancel the meeting and you can take a look at the conversations that Amy's had with uh, Ghassan, my brother, and Roxanne, my wife. Got it. Okay. Um, cool. So and she's literally you... talking behind your back. Two right. other. So this is 
so this is um let's see let me think think through how to address this this what you've done is a very nice demo of a very easy tool to show does that yes. does that make sense yes um in terms well, of and go ahead sorry no uh, it's it's easy in the sense that of what it does but it's just i, I found it hard to show because like what are you going to show uh, like a, sending an email, just thinking creatively about what I actually need to show you to make this demo a good looking demo was the hard part about this thing. Okay. Well, so let me, let me offer you some, some recommendations then. Um, Please. Go to, go to, um, <clears throat> there are a couple of things you could do. One, one, and you did this very nicely with, with what is often referred to as a before and after. So you develop the, you develop the before by having to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And then you develop the after with the back and forth and back and forth, but all done uh, almost exclusively, yeah, exclusively done in an automated fashion by Amy, the AI assistant, right? Yes. So that's, that's really good. Um, and it becomes very obvious in this case. The next thing you did is we went, show me the, uh, the email stream that, that, was, that you shared. Uh, not that, but the, that. So this part oh, is... This? No, no, the, that right there, yes. Okay. So the meeting discussed something important. So this is okay, but it's it's for the what the um the receiving end of things is fairly unintelligible. And what I mean by that is, it's very small on my screen, and okay. because your mouse is kind of zipping around, I'm trying to sort of take it in as you're talking about it and and mousing and humans cannot look and take in multiple things at a time. We're, we're fairly serial creatures. Yes. So, so for example, what you might do here is, is um, go to the very bottom where it says Amy Ingram and highlight where it says, hi, Ramsey, the meeting with uh, Hassan and uh, Roxanne is now scheduled. There you go. And what you do is you put your mouse just sort of next to that and say, so, what you're seeing here is at the end of that, the, uh, the email stream driven automatically by Amy. And what you might do now is point to Amy at, um, above this at each one. So Amy has, has, has complete the, completed the process. She has the AI person, um, entity, has successfully scheduled a meeting with all these different parties. And as you can see, and now scroll up slowly, um, the only, yes, yeah, stop, one more, one more. Okay, right there, yeah. The only times where you were involved, and I'll highlight your name. And I don't know if you can do a, uh, what is it, a, a control highlight or a shift highlight to highlight your name out the uh, down below, but without getting everything in between. Whoops, looks like you clicked on it. Uh, I did control high, control H and that did not work. That did not work. <laughs> it just opened um, well, highlight page. that one and then and then go down and just highlight your other um, instance of your name. And here you're able to comment and say that here, as you can see, the only times that I actually physically had to get involved uh, is twice in this long stream of activities driven automatically by Amy the AI. Yeah. Right? Well, if, um, yeah. If I can critique myself for one, I. Sure. I didn't want uh, to show all this and that that threw me off when I was actually showing it to you because ah. I wanted to show this. So this email, mm -hmm. and this email, that's all I wanted to show you because I didn't, I didn't want to show you all this mainly because it shows that I'm actually being involved, which, you know, like it's harder to explain that I am actually not doing anything when I get these emails. So that threw me off and I, sh I need to find, if, if I do this demo again, I need to find a way to either remove this or uh, do something with it just to make it look nicer. So what, what we just did is one way to deal with that. Yeah. As, yeah. as one way. Now, um, when you were chatting with, um, 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 with Julie Hansen and you were asking to go through some of the key elements of, of great demo methodology, one of, the, one of the things she said was do the last thing first. Um, and one way you might start off this demo is go to your, go to the, um, the screen where it showed from, uh, the, the demo has been scheduled and that you can reschedule or cancel if you would, please. Yep. So, yeah. And so there you go. So 
this is both the starting point and the end point. And this is an example of what she was talking about and what, what basically I introduced as great demo methodology. And the verbiage is something like, what you're looking at here is a meeting that was scheduled between several parties, all done automatically by an AI assistant, um, wherein several rounds of email went back and forth between multiple players. A, a time was found that was um, acceptable to all the parties, and the meeting organizer, um, Ramsey, the only uh, activity he had to do was say, uh, Amy, set up a meeting, and Amy, that meeting looks good. Does that make sense? All yep. done automatically. This is known as, this is the, the do the last thing first, because this one screen, to a certain degree, is all you may ever need to show. Okay. Um, you could do it, you can do that setup and so forth. Um, you could show the intermediary things, but if you present this with that kind of verbal overview, what will happen next is people will say, oh, I get it, that I, they'll, they'll get it because this is a very straightforward application. And they'll start to ask questions, although very frankly, right here in this, this one screen, about 90% of the questions that somebody might ask can be answered just by, by glancing at the screen and perhaps a little bit of verbiage. Does that, does that all make sense to you? It does, yes. So that's, that's, the, that's the concept behind doing the last thing first. And in many cases, you can reduce the amount of time you actually have to spend driving around in a demo, um, and you can, uh, you can increase the impact of the deliverable rather dramatically by simply taking, taking uh, the customer directly to the payoff screen. Okay. Which is this. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm just reflecting to a point where I did this unintentionally and it worked. And my an hour long meet, uh, demo was uh, cut down to five minutes. So, there you, what, tell me what happened. Uh, so, part of our product lineup is we have physical equipment and we have virtual, uh, which is representative of the same physical stuff, but it's just software. Uh huh. They already use our physical stuff and they wanted to talk about our software. Aha. Uh -huh. So before the before the actual demo, I just ran a test that they would run on physical equipment. I ran it on the on the virtual stuff. Mm -hmm. I just showed them the test running, and I asked them who knows what this test is, and everybody knew. I'm like, okay, well, this is the same test that you ran on physical. I just moved it to a virtual port, and it's doing the exact same thing. And we said, okay, that's all we needed to know. <laughs> and that, boys and girls, is the power of doing the last thing for. Do you have that? Do you have? Um, are you able to bring up that screen and show me what it looks like? Uh, which screen? Sorry. The that test run. Um, can you bring that up and either show it running or potentially even better, show it complete? Uh, it was for a different company, and uh, it was in person. Well, you don't, yeah. You don't have access to that screen no. anymore. No, I do not. Okay. No, All right. So, but that, but that, so. So that description, and, and you probably could have even gone a step further by completing the test and simply doing your same verbiage. Do you guys have an idea, you know, do you know what you're looking at here? And they'd say, well, yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, you know, the, just showing the completed test for the equipment. And then your comment could be, yeah, and this was all done in the virtual space as opposed to having to actually set up the physical hardware. And they would say, and I quote, Whoa, that's impressive. I got to get me some of that. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny part is I did this all by mistake. This was within my first year of being an SE, and I didn't have a clue of what I was doing until my next year. So ah, okay. I, I can't take credit about anything that I did last year, that year. It just happened. Well, but we can all learn from what happened. So the yes. fact that, that they got it so rapidly is, is validation of this, of this concept. Yep. Yep. I agree. Cool. Um, yeah, so this is, I mean, what you, what you just showed here is very, very, um, sim I mean, to be blunt, a very, very simple tool and a very, very simple and very easy demo to, to communicate. It wouldn't be as tortured as traditional software demos simply because there's just not that much to show, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but if you think in terms now of, let's say, traditional workflow-based, well, this is workflow software, but traditional enterprise software where 
you know, there are multiple workflows that need to be executed, multiple players are involved. Um, what, what people will often do is try to do a, what's referred to as a day in the life demo. Are you familiar with those? I can uh, estimate what it means, but I have never heard the term. Wow, okay, so it's a very, it's, um, in the world of pre-sales, it's, it's very often used. Um, senior management will often, often say, you know, we need an end-to-end -end demo. We need some way to show people everything that our software can do, um, put together an end-to-end -end demo, uh, or, you know, show them a day in the life. What's, what's the user experience like uh, for our tool? And those demos, oh, there you go, congratulations. Yep. Um, those demos are often extraordinarily painful because they will, they will start off in many cases. So, um, so I'll give you an example with using this tool. Um, you've been using this tool for how long? Uh, a couple of days. A couple of days, okay. What did you have to do to get it set up and installed before your first use? Probably not a lot, but what did you have to do? Oh yeah, like, so, well, I had to fill in a lot of this information, uh, put in my preferences, connect the calendars, schedule hours. Uh, I didn't have to do a lot of these, but I could but, if I needed to. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so you're saying that uh, the cust the we would show the customer every single one of these steps where we connect every single. You got it. Yeah. Most traditional demos, they, they'll start off by showing people how you'd set all this stuff up. And for, you know, big B2B software, that, that could take minutes or hours in some cases. Um, and, the, and the scary thing about it is that stuff that is done once and then forgotten about, and yet yeah. people seem to feel obligated to demo it. So one of the things we teach in Great Demo is the difference between setup mode and daily use mode. And setup mode is all the stuff you, you, would, you would either do once, or in many cases, the vendor would do once, or an implementation by somebody it would only be, be want, done once and then forgotten about because it's, it's set up. Yep. Daily use mode is what happens exactly that. You know, when you come into work on Monday morning as a... Uh, you know, as an individual contributor, what is your workflow like? As a manager, what is your workflow like? As an executive, what is your workflow like? Um, and the difference between setup mode and daily use mode is huge with respect to uh, these kinds of demos. So let me pause there and ask, does, does that all make sense? Yeah, it does. It does make a lot of sense. Uh, for me personally, I don't even show the daily use stuff. I just show like the end result stuff. Or at least that's what I like to show. Well, then you're you're way way ahead of the curve. So not showing, you know, if you can show the end result, that then enables you to verbally describe what daily use is like. So, for example, go back to your your end screen there. The uh, meeting was set up. Yeah, four me four meeting schedules. So that's that's an end result screen that effectively says the workflow has been completed here's what happened and here are the, the benefits that are associated with that. Here's the gain that was associated with that. So here a meeting was set up between a pile of different people. It was all done automatically by an agent, by an AI uh, agent, as opposed to what may have consumed uh, you and the other players time uh, to the extent of, you know, 10 to 20 minutes every day, just looking for meeting times. When you add that up, that's a lot every week. That's a huge amount every year. Yep. So that's yeah. So if you're able to, if you're doing this, you're way ahead of the curve, and you've stumbled into what we've been, what we teach is one of the primary ideas. Well, uh, like I tried to do that. It's not perfect by any means, and I stumbled into it by doing it the old-fashioned way and showing step by step how it works, and then <laughs> I got yelled at by my manager. That, <laughs> that's how I stumbled into it, but I learned. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. Um, good. Thank you guys for sticking through this long video. I hope it was informative. Peter spent a lot longer time with me. He spent over two hours discussing demoing. Uh, and I'm, I'll add that piece, the piece that's not in the video. I will add that in the podcast. So check that out. Question for you guys. Do you start at the end when you are demoing something for your customer? What do you guys need to work on your demo to perfect it? Leave a comment below and I will see you on a later video.